Well, they say procrastination is a manifestation of self-doubt. So I must be plagued with self-doubt because I have been procrastinating on doing this inaugural Facebook Live video for a long time. And I have just reset my timer countless times to uh, give me some encouragement to go forward with this. So here I am. My name is Tanya McIntyre. I am a positive media correspondent for The Good News Only. And I founded The Good News Only because I don't want to procrastinate anymore. I don't want to be filled with self-doubt anymore. And the reason we are filled overweight society in the history of mankind is because we are inundated with messages that we are never enough. We are never attractive enough. We are never smart enough. We are never hairless enough. We are never enough, of course, until we buy something to make us feel better or take a pill hoping to feel better. And that programming starts literally from infancy, telling us that we are never enough. And I know this to be true because I was part of that agenda for a very long time, I'm embarrassed to say now. I was a broadcast journalist for 22 years. And the agenda of mainstream media is, without question, to perpetuate what I call the FUD factor, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And that FUD factor goes on and is perpetuated in all of the messages we hear, not just from news, but from advertising telling us that we are never enough. So I left that career after 22 years and I founded The Good News Only because I wanted there to be a resource for people to watch, read, and hear good things about good people. And I know there are far more good people in the world than bad, and there are far more good things happening in the world than bad because I covered all of the worldwide media for over 20 years to see that there are far more good things going on in the world than bad and far more good people in the world than bad, but that doesn't get coverage because it doesn't sell advertising. I was part of uh, the Swiss air crash in 1998, for instance. I was one of the first reporters on the scene of that horrendous event. And I knew after covering that event for just two days, the carnage and despair, there was a harmonious uh, thought and sentiment in all the people I was interviewing. They all said, you know what, we can't let these people come from overseas to collect what very little re what might remain of their loved ones and come to a, a bleak, empty hotel room in a strange city. We need to gather together and collect these people with love, and we want to open our hearts and our homes to these people who are coming from overseas. So after two days of covering the carnage and despair, I made that my story. I thought this is a fascinating, heartwarming story that people need to hear about. And when I made that report to uh, my home office, my news director came on the line and she said, WTF, when WTF wasn't even an acronym. She said, what is this you're giving me? I want to see the blood and feel the pain. And I remember standing in the phone booth in Halifax, yes, a phone booth, because cell phones at that point were about this big and very expensive. So I was in a phone booth, and I remember holding the phone, the receiver away from my my head and I thought, well, something clicked in my head at that point. That's when something clicked to say, I can't do this anymore. But I had been doing it then for 18 years. It's what defined me. So I was paralyzed by fear, uncertainty, and doubt. What would I do then if I didn't do broadcast journalism? What would I be? How would I define myself? Who would I be? So I stayed in that career for another couple of years, actually another four years, and I became a news director. I thought I had made it to the top of my career, and I thought I would have some autonomy over what I was broadcasting as a journalist. And then in 2002, then President George Bush declared his illegal war on Iraq. And when the rest of the world and CNN was broadcasting shock and awe, I led my newscast that day 
with an interview I had done with the director of the local Red Cross about what we were doing on a humanitarian level to help all the innocent people who were being bombed under the guise of looking for weapons of mass destruction. After that newscast, my boss called me and said, where's our news coverage? And I said, there's all kinds of it on all kinds of radio and television across the world, and I am not walking down that path of perpetuating American propaganda. So he said, I think you should look for another job. And I said, I agree. And that's finally when I made that decision to walk away from a career up until that point that had defined me. I knew then I could no longer be aligned with an agenda that perpetuates the FUD factor, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And that's why I created the Media Fest. It's a diet that really works, and I encourage everyone I meet to take it. This is my promise to you. Seven days, three simple steps, and in one week, your life will change. I am positive if you just try it for seven days, you will see a tangible difference in your life. And I know this to be true because when I left my career in broadcast journalism and my husband and I went away to Spain, we had an opportunity to live there and work there for four years. And just by virtue of not being able to understand all the mainstream media messages we were hearing because we couldn't speak or understand Spanish at that time, there was a difference in how we were feeling and how we were thinking, even how we were speaking. And that's when I started to make the correlation. When we are subjected to these messages every day, it affects not only our psyche, but our whole biology, our whole physiology. So try this for seven days. Go to thegoodnewsonly.com. Sign up for the diet that really works, a media fast. And I am positive. Oop. <laughs> In seven days, three simple steps, one week, your life will change. I'm hoping that you found some value in this and you will share it with your family and friends. And when you see me, you will see a consistent background. I will either be wearing a yellow scarf or wearing a ball cap with my logo, the good news only. Thank you very much to my friend, Peter Steele from Cape Breton, a graphic artist. And uh, my best friend, thank you, Peter, for doing this. And to Cheryl Pluff, thank you, my business mentor, for encouraging me to get out of my comfort zone and to conquer self-doubt and to do my first Facebook Live. It is invigorating, frightening, and uh, hopefully you've gotten some value from it. And I hope you will subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is... Um, underway. I'm adding things to it every day. You can subscribe at powerofpositivemedia.com and please stay connected with me online. I'm always here for encouragement and support and I want your feedback on the seven day media fast. I want to know how you're feeling after seven days, three simple steps and after one week tell me how your life has changed. My name is Tanya McIntyre, a positive media correspondent with The Good News Only, where you only hear good things about good people. And my wish for you is to live well, laugh often, love always, and, of course, stay positive. Bye for now.